It is a beautiful day. It is a new way. It is a new way of being. It's a new way of seeing. And I wanted to talk about the illusion of meditation. So the illusion of meditation is that you're not trying to take something from the meditation, that you're trying to gain something from the meditation, that meditation is the subtle recognition of you tapping back into the power, tapping back into the resonance, tapping back into that charge, into that electromagnetic kinetic source field energy, that you're having this recognition that you're tapping back into awareness, that you're tapping back in, that you're there, that you're present, that you are in the presence of awareness itself. So meditation is not something that you're trying to gain from, that you're trying to take something away from it, but it's just learning to tap back in and it's learning to get plugged back in, get plugged back into the frequencies of God, get plugged back into the frequencies of source. And as you're getting plugged back into that frequency of source, what is happening is that you're gaining a subtle recognizance of calmness, of stillness, of peace, of bliss. But it's not that you had to achieve the bliss. It's not that you had to prove to someone else that you were in bliss. But it's not about striving. It's not about a tiredness, a trying. But it's just about being there. It's just about not even focusing. It's not about thinking. It's not about trying to be or trying to become or trying to transform. It will integrate it for you when you're tapping back into the power. So meditation is just you slowly but surely tapping back into the power of Christ consciousness. So that's what meditation is. It's not that you're trying to be happy because you are meditating. It's not that you're using this person to be happy so that you can be in bliss, so that you can be come them or use them and when we're using the law of subtraction yes we're putting things in our awareness and we're putting things into our reality that is changing the paradigm and making us feel more in resonance but we're not using those things as a form of manipulation to make ourselves happy so meditation is not an excuse to be in bliss it's not an excuse or a reason why you're not tapped in because the only way to be tapped in is to know that you can drop into your spirit and drop yourself into the essential oils of source and tap back into the power that is already here, that is already ever present. So meditation is not a permission slip to slack off and to feel like that I can't be in bliss because I'm not meditating. That there is some days where you don't meditate and you're just integrating the knowledge and, and having your human self come back to your God self. So the human part of yourself is trying to integrate and come back into balance. It's a balancing of the books. It's a balancing of the decks. So it's all about balance and harmony and love and unity. And how can we have that when there's this such an imbalance of feeling like I don't know how to tap into bliss. You can tap into bliss right now. You can tap into consciousness right now. You can tap in. And I'm not saying that you have to be full on ecstatic and enthusiastic and happy all the time. I'm not saying you have to do that whatsoever. But the thing that you can do is just to feel the wholeness, is to feel the sensation and feel into that vibration already they're ever present because if you just do that you, there is no need to always meditate because if you meditated for five hours that's that's fine and i'm not saying that you shouldn't do that i'm not saying that you that it's a waste of time but it's a little bit of a waste of time to just solely meditate for five hours because it's going to take you 30 or 40 years to become enlightened and i know that some of you don't want to take 40 years to become enlightened the only way that we can be accelerated is to know that we are accelerating and that we are already doing it and that it's already happening and that it will happen and that it can happen if we practice this one principle is just tap into the power. Just tap into the power. Just tap into the power. 
So there, you're already there. You're already in the power. You're already, you're already in the presence of awareness itself. So you don't need to feel like you have to sit there for five hours and hope and pray that you will tap into Christ consciousness. It can happen very rapidly. Now in the beginning stages, you're using meditation to get into a calm state, into a bliss state, into a state of awareness, into a state where you can discern what is good energy and what is bad energy and what is the transmutation process and what is integration. But what if you just didn't focus, didn't say anything, didn't think for a second that you weren't doing anything and time stood still and that you saw through the illusion of time. And as you saw through that illusion of time that Okay, I'm just going to fully gather my will and gather everything here, ever present. And I'm going to gather every single thing within my awareness. And I'm going to tap into wholeness right there. Just take back your power. Take back the power that was taken away from you. And when you take back that power and authority, because most of the time we gave our power away to the illusion of success, achievements, proving this person wrong, having to have a partner to uh, have a form of status. You have to have a house, you have to have a car, you have to have a bank account. And if you don't have anything to offer, then you're worthless, which is not true at all. That's an illusion itself. So what we use, it, we use meditation to tap back into self-worth, but that can't be your doormat. That can't be your punching bag. You have to place that somewhere. You have to place your awareness somewhere and you have to place it within your heart and aligned with the mind and the mind, body, and the spirit complex. So we can be a god most of the time, but sometimes we need to eat something. Sometimes we need to listen to different music instead of just meditative music. So there is always a transmutation of vibration and there's always integration. There's always an integrating process going on within your vibratory state. So it's really just taking back your power and tapping back into the power and knowing that the power is already there and that you can always tap back into it whenever you need to, whenever you want to, and that it's already there and you don't have to try to do it. You don't have to meditate for five hours to do it that if you want it to be fast, you can say a simple affirmation and it can snap you into alignment. It can sharp shock you into alignment. It can be a subtle, direct experience of enlightenment because enlightenment is the most direct experience and that nothing is a surprise to us and that we don't know phenomenon apart from experience. But you have experienced all experiences inside of one experience. So there's never been an experience that you've never experienced. So nothing should be a surprise to you. So it shouldn't surprise you that you don't have to meditate for five hours to get to the bliss state, to get to the God state. You can actually do it in a matter of five or ten minutes. It was like the whole illusion with exercise back in the old days. They felt like you had to work out for three or four hours. Well, that's kind of a waste of time. But you can do an intensive workout for 20 or 30 minutes and be there. And actually probably burn more calories on top of that. And you can kind of equate this as the form of an example to meditation. And sometimes if you need to meditate, do a power meditation for 10 minutes and then later do it again and then do it again and do it again. If that's what you need to do. But you have to discern what it is that you need and what you need to do and what works for you. So meditation is just the gateway into tapping into the I am. And it's just a way that you can integrate and process and contemplate and use this as a time of observation. It gives you time to see through illusions and through diluted ways of thinking and diluted ways of being. And you see that no matter what you do today, that 
this awareness is always here for you to tap back into it. So this awareness is always here for you to tap back into it. You don't have to reach for it. You can just breathe into it and relax into it. It allows you to relax your feeling state. It allows you to gather every single thing. It allows you to gather yourself. And when you gather yourself, then you'll find true happiness and that it's a maturation of the soul when you do this yourself. When you have that brief moment where you close your eyes and just be there and just be here and I exist and I am this and I am that and I can, I will and I do and then that is how powerful it really is. You don't want to wait your whole life but you don't want to feel like you have to rush for it either so there is balance, there is unification within that. So there is a sense of unification in that you don't have to be hot or cold. You can be in between. But I'm not saying being in between the light and the dark, but I'm just saying being Switzerland about things is very profound in its nature. Now, usually when people describe that, they don't use that, but I'm going to use it because it's very essential for what is happening right now. So when you are excluding things and including things, when you are the container of all things, when you are the container of all that is, and you're the reason why things appear and manifest and subtract and add and different causes and different effects but this is supernatural causes and supernatural effects because you're making different decisions making automatic choices and that you don't have to really pay attention to know what's going on it's like you're there but you're not there but you're in your spirit fully You don't have to be aware of the details to understand the entirety of all the details. But this is what it means to be present. This is what it means to be profoundly present. And that you're not lingering in the future and you're not lingering in the past, but you're here in the now. And you're here right now. And you've always been now. And you always already were here to begin with, you've already been here. That's why you're an oracle. You're an oracle of love, light, and wisdom. So, don't think of meditation as, oh, this is gonna get me into bliss. You should already be in bliss before you even meditate. And that you don't need anything and you don't need anybody. You don't need this place. You don't need your body. You don't need a single thing. It's a state of non-neediness. You don't have to have something. You don't have to crave something. But you already have everything that you need. You have everything that you ever wanted. You have everything that you've ever needed. And that you're okay. You're fine. You're good. You are complete. And this is how you breathe in wholeness. This is how you breathe in the wholeness before you tap into the wholeness. Because you have to feel rich before you become rich. And you have to feel love for yourself before you can feel love for another human being and be of service to them. And it's all about really finding that self-worth and finding that balance of it all.
also sometimes we need to recalibrate. Sometimes we need a day where we don't do a single thing. Because sometimes you feel tired and it's not that you're tired, it's just that your human self is coming back to the higher self. So and as that human self is coming back to the higher self, then you're being coming closer to God than you ever were. So seeing God within yourself in all things and in all ways, in all ways to no end, is seeing through the illusion of all things. And it's seeing God within yourself. That's the greatest illusion to see through, is you have to see God within. This will give you a greater appreciation of God because you are God and everybody is God. And that's why Jesus was God. And that's why he was nailed on the cross and died because he needed to show everybody that there wasn't any guilt and condemnation and, and sin because there is no sin. There is no right or wrong. When we argue that, we are always in a cesspool of manipulation and deludedness and self-centeredness. So, it's a matter of just understanding why Joan of Arc was who she was. She was very gifted and she was there to fulfill something. And then she was nailed on the stake. We don't understand why this happened, but those people went away so that we could stand up and be and prosper. And there's a reason for all this. Same thing with Notre Dame. So gifted, saw death, saw genocide, saw all kinds of things. But he didn't know how to channel it properly. He didn't know how to put it somewhere. He didn't know how to relax into it. He didn't even meditate probably. So he didn't get to hone in his gifts and he didn't have teachers and people to guide him but he was still one of the greatest psychics known to man same thing with Edgar Casey. so all these people led up to the great awakening as well they were people that were meant to break the mold and be rebels and and bring this peaceful rebellion back into balance So the next decade of consciousness is the golden age. So we can we can be in that golden age already. And we don't have to wait 10 years for it to happen. We don't have to wait for things to happen. We don't have to be patient for things to happen. But we should know that all things are working out for our best interests. And that all is well. That all is well with myself. Because I am. I am all that I am. I can, I will, and I do. And this is a continuous state of manifestation instead of a gradual state of manifestation. So we don't have to seek healing. The healing will happen. Rather you want it to or not. Rather you want to restrict it and negate it or use ways of escapism. Because we all do this. As human beings, we all use things as escapism. And it's okay I'm not saying that I haven't done it. I'm not more special than any of you who are listening to this message. I'm not a unicorn that flew from the galaxy of Orion and was supposed to be the most enlightened person here. I'm not. Because I don't believe anyone is the most enlightened person here. I believe we're all doing the best that we can with what's being presented to us. I truly believe that. And even people who are not tapped into Christ consciousness are tapped into Christ consciousness and they just have a third density energy signature and are channeling the self-awareness of me, the sense of me. And it's still truth. It's just not coming from a higher realm, a higher density of consciousness. It's still truth. But when we come from a higher density of truth, a higher consciousness of truth, we are able to discern from all things and we're able to see through things and we're able to understand that at any given moment we can address a certain issue from the higher mind's knowledge, from the higher mind's point of view and from the higher mind's ways of the spirit, the tongue of the spirit, the truth of the spirit. 
because you know that you're tapped in to truth, that you're in truth and that you're of truth and that you have God's perspective and that it is the perspective. It's not an opinionated state of awareness. It's not being opinionated. It's not about arguing. It's not about this or that. But it's just about I am. But when we do own it, when we own everything, and we let go completely and surrender to God fully, then we are our authentic expression of God. We are our authentic truth. We are the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the helm of salvation, and the belt of truth. And it's not about getting it right. It's not about, am I doing this right? Am I doing something wrong? But you're just on the journey itself and it's gonna take you many different places. And that it's gonna, it's gonna take you in all different directions, north, east, south, and west. And you just have to go with the current and go with the flow and go with where God wants to take you no matter how difficult it is, but you welcome the catalyst, you welcome the challenge, you welcome the overcoming, and then it, and it doesn't feel like it is overcoming, and it doesn't feel like it's anything. Not that you're not feeling into vibration, not you're not having sense perceptions and feelings, but it's a more heightened state of awareness, and you align with positive feelings and positive thoughts and positive choices. And it allows you to be that which you want to become. It allows you to be that. It allows you to be in your beingness. And you don't have to feel like you have to do a bunch of things and and feel unhappy and unworthy and, and feel like you have to try to succeed and prove to this person that I am this and and prove to your partner or anything like that or your family because it doesn't it doesn't matter. You're here as a living testament of the Creator. You're here as a living testament of the Oracle of Love, Light, and Wisdom, and that's what you're really here for. It's not that you're here. You're here to be of service to others and share your living testament of how you choose to breathe life into the space of awareness. But it's not putting yourself on a pedestal, and it's not only promoting you, but it's promoting the sense of awareness, the sense of God, the sense of love, the truth, and to see through the illusion so people can be happy. And so that people can not feel like they have to be subjected to the illusion, that they don't have to feel like they have to be a part of the illusion, that they can go their own direction that they can go on their own journey in their life and realizing that it is their journey and realizing that they're here to be of service and be a blessing wherever they are at. Rather you're a mother, rather you're a teacher, rather you're a store clerk, rather you're a janitor, rather you're a galactic being from the 12th dimension or something. So, we are who we are, and we should embrace it. Embrace it fully. Embrace the suffering, embrace the emotions, embrace everything. And if we did that and accepted that, then we wouldn't have to try to tap into the power. You would just naturally tap into the power. So that was my video. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you have a good day and I hope that you were blessed by this message. So thank you.